Hey guys, this is Dr. Chad Koontz and just want to say thank you for all the good feedback. In fact, Christina's feedback is the reason we're going to go over this topic today. I want you guys to know that I'm here to continue to provide very specific videos and solutions to your problems. In fact, so today we're going to go over how to strength train your client's shoulders who have had previous rotator cuff tears or surgery and they're currently struggling with overhead load limited mobility. And I know exactly what you're talking about. There's certain people you're like, oh my God, it's going to take forever for you to finally get up into that, you know, full terminal position. So what can I even do with you? So I want to kind of walk you guys through um, a few different videos and exercises and really just clinical paradigms to think about uh, whether you're a fitness instructor, group class, personal trainer, we'll try to make this amenable to all different um, settings. So I really like utilizing the rope with this forward press and this shoulder variation. The rope actually adds a little instability and I, I really like a big co-contraction when working the shoulders, particularly the rotator cuff. We don't want to isolate the rotator cuff and make it do all the work only on its own. I tend to find that a lot of people have a much weaker rotator cuff than we think and then they tend to compensate the wrong way with their delts or upper traps. So the rope actually adds some instability. My thumb's pointing up so I'm in external rotation which is appropriate, present, prevents us or decreases the likelihood from having more of like an impingement. And I'm really trying to cue that shoulder blade to kind of punch up and out to cue the serratus interior. Now, I like the, the consistent weight that this cable column provides, but you could even use an elastic band. You'll have a little bit more pull at the top, which is fine. If you're in a group fitness class setting, you might even have someone hold on to the rope or step on it with their foot and then punch up and out and you could kind of do some, some team or group work if you wanted to do that. But the stratus interior is just really a, a huge role in terms of helping this, the rotator cuff and helping put the, the shoulder right on top of the glenoid in the best position. So the next one I want to go ahead and show you guys here is the landmine press. So the landmine press, again, encourages more of that protraction. We're not getting that full 180 degrees overhead. In fact, from this side view, I'm only at probably closer to what, you know, 130, 140. A lot of people have that functional range, and we should at least be pretty close to that, right? So if I need to reach overhead to grab a drink of water or grab a, you know, a plate out of the cupboard, we need to be in that, in that neighborhood of range of motion. Now with the landmine press, I really want to cue that your core stays strong. You could do this in a half kneeling or a full kneeling position. I'm just demonstrating it in a standing position. But notice there's not too much rocking going on. I am still trying to really reach at the top right in my shoulder blade area. And that again helps get this nice co-contraction, this upward rotation of the shoulder blade and it puts the entire shoulder complex in a more favorable position. So I really like this one. You could do two hands, you could do alternate. There's a lot of variations with landmines. If you guys are in your group fitness class, again, you could even just have dowels or kind of broomstick handles and, and you could even put some bands around that if you wanted to mimic that and have someone other stabilize it. So that's just another option for the group fitness setting. I, I tend to really kind of like the, the uh, shared experiences that two people could have working together at times. They can kind of make it fun and they're kind of there for a social angle too. So that's the second one uh, I wanted to show you guys. And the third one is a rope face pull. You could do this with dumbbells in, a, in our group fitness classes. But from this angle right here, as I squeeze that, I'm getting some really good middle trap, actually even lower trap, and rotator cuff firing. I'm moving into external rotation. So this one will be one of the more direct exercises that does specifically target the rotator cuff but it's not going to completely overwork it. The weight can stay pretty light as it is. Most people have trouble just getting into this position. So you don't necessarily only have to do it in the cable column. There's different variations. So I actually started, if you'll see standing, pulling up. That's going to have actually a little bit more torque to the back. Um, but if I do in a half kneeling, depending if your clients are able to get onto the knees, this is a really nice variation because it gets some nice upper thoracic extension as well. You need upper thoracic extension to support uh, the shoulders. And then for mobility drills, one that I really one that really comes to my mind that you can have them warm up with, you can have them continue to progress into, are the prone swimmers. I think you'll see a better 
from the side angle. So I'm trying to keep my legs straight, trying to keep my heels up off the ground. I'm trying to get my head up off the ground as well. And my head, if you notice, is kind of looking down at the bottom. My hands have gone into internal rotation, but I'm going to rotate up into external rotation. And I'm trying to reach up toward the ceiling as high as I can. If you think about your people that are sitting around all day, computer jobs, and then they come to fight, you know, their entire posterior chain from their glutes, the hamstrings to the middle back, the low back. This is one heck of a way to strengthen their upper body and really their entire posterior chain in order to allow them to try to get that full overhead range of motion in a safe, active, dynamic way. So their brain can kind of tell them where the limit is without being passive and kind of pulling them too far. So that's a nice, safe way to help them kind of continue to get mobility overhead. So I will say this, you know, continue to make sure that you're getting good, adequate co-contractions. You're not just isolating the rotator cuff and beating it up. A lot of people have very weak rotator cuffs, and so we want to kind of be smart. That's the way we train it. Training the serratus anterior for protraction can help people get more overhead mobility and actually just more overhead stability and strength. Um, more instability-like training can be helpful at getting more co-contractions. That's why I use the rope in that first one. The rope's a little unstable. So anytime you can incorporate and implement a way which is slightly unstable at times, um, be careful about how much weight you put on those type of exercises. But when it's unstable, it causes that co-contraction. That's a great way to kind of stabilize and get the rotator cuff to fire. And then make sure you're avoiding the terminal overhead range of motion. So almost all the exercises I showed you today, people really don't need full flexion, you know, where you need 170, 180 degrees. Uh, a majority of these exercises that we went over today, like the standing sing single arm land press, the, the, rope, the rope face pulls, and that first one, which is kind of a shoulder press variation with the rope, uh, those all get you in the ballpark somewhere between 140, 150 degrees, and even then you can kind of modify it a little bit. But I found those to be incredibly helpful to help our clients strengthen their shoulders uh, despite having had rotator cuff tears and despite overhead limitations. So I hope that was helpful, guys. Thank you guys so much, and, and as always, uh, if you have any specific areas of interest, just reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to take some time on my day and try to provide the valuable content you guys need. Thank you. Take care.